everyone. My name is Marvi Javed and I'm a senior specialist for environmental compliance at Kimonix. I'm also based in Lahore, Pakistan. And over the past few weeks, we've seen horrible news and footage come out of my country. Major flooding and landslides caused by a heavy monsoon season and glacial lake outbursts following an intense heat wave earlier this summer have submerged one third of the country. The scale of devastation caused by the floods in Pakistan this year is truly an eye opener for the world and for us Pakistanis too. With many asking why more wasn't done to protect communities at risk. It's important to highlight that climate change, although it's a contributor and a multiplier of impacts, alone should not be blamed. Government inaction and mismanagement, um, structural inequalities and poor policies have all contributed to this catastrophe. We've all seen the footage of homes, hotels and other buildings constructed alongside rivers um, being washed away. And we've seen uh, newly constructed underpasses and highways in major cities being flooded, which clearly points towards uh, poor land use planning, poor urban planning, poor infrastructure development. There's also a lot of talk about reparations for loss and damage, which I think rightly should be part of the discussion. Pakistan emits less than 1% of global greenhouse gas emissions, yet we rank among the 10 most affected countries by climate change. So there's no question that those countries responsible for climate change, especially the top three emitters um, that are responsible for about 42% of global CO2 emissions, must take financial responsibility and compensate those countries that are suffering the losses. However, our collective responsibility should not end here. We must ask what's going to happen after we have secured those funds. What does this mean for Pakistan's post-disaster recovery? Countries most vulnerable to climate change need better convergence of science and policy for adaptation. We need good governance backed by robust climate data to advance climate resilient and inclusive development. As development practitioners, we must ensure improved understanding and integration of climate risk data into all levels of decision making and into our programming. This can include improving early warning systems for accurate forecasting and effective disaster risk reduction, adapting land use and urban plans to avoid investments in high risk areas, building more climate resilient or um, hazard resilient infrastructure and using nature-based solutions such as coral reefs or forests as natural buffers encouraging the private sector to invest in adaptation solutions, um, introducing insurance products to reduce and transfer risk, fostering a culture of resilience and focusing on behavior change. And to me, most important is keeping the vulnerable communities at the forefront of climate risk planning and management. And consider migration as a possible solution in some cases. We're locked in, an, in a pipeline of ongoing warming, uh, which is going to lead to more intense and more frequent climate-induced events in the future. Um, so in countries like Pakistan and others that are most vulnerable to climate change, we must focus our attention on adaptation because that is truly what's going to build community preparedness, reduce impacts, and um, contribute to long-term economic resiliency something that's really needed in Pakistan.